How you guys doing? Uh, another uh, Stitch Method a live feed. Um, oh, wow, there's a lot of you here right now. Hello to everyone. Uh, Eric, Shadow, Scott, Mark, Jeff, Cheddar. It's okay. Go eat dinner. What are you having? Uh, Cheddar, what kind of dinner are you having? What kind of restaurant? Hey, Joe. How's the hand doing, Joseph? Um, <laughs> nice. Thanks, EJ. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, I got my uh, Gibson. Uh, <laughs> oh, you're so funny. Cheddar, you're so funny with us. Thank you. <laughs> With well, the vegan uh, Ben and Jerry's fun. I will go get some tonight. Uh, why not? Hey, what do you think about this Dead and Company tour? Of pet oh, well, Max, I'll tell you because I'm going to Atlanta tomorrow. I will be at the Atlanta Dead and Company show. Uh, I don't know if any of you guys will be there, but if you are and you see me, please, please say hello. Um, I'm looking forward to it. Nice, chill night. Uh, cool. Okay, Joseph. Joseph had minor hand surgery. He's my... Um, one of my students. Uh, he, uh, what is Joe learning? And uh, and he had to have some stitches. Hello, Colin. Hey, Colin. I, I've been uh, I've been spotting you on uh, Google Hangouts, <laughs> trying to get you uh, just a little uh, thank you one on one. Uh, lovely email you wrote. Um, nice. I, I, yeah, I'm very excited to to go to Dead and Company tomorrow night. Um, it's gonna be a fun time. It's uh, well needed, and it's gonna be a nice reprieve. And I'm just going to sit back and enjoy the show. All right, so um, let's talk about uh, the quick review, uh, and then we'll talk about what Gibson. All right, so we're just reviewing the Whipping Post intro, uh, like how to start soloing on Whipping Post. Um, and again, it was just the start, right? It was just, this is what happens in the beginning. We have a lot more to do. I'm not going to be getting into, into, that, into that tonight, excuse me, but I will be discussing one thing I totally missed, um, like totally missed in the video, and I was a little disappointed, and I was like, oh my God, how come I didn't talk about this? So. Uh, really quickly, I'm going to go through, if you don't mind, I'm just going to go through the questions that I got, right? And, and so uh, I can do some Rory. I can do some Rory. Ain't no, ain't no problem there. Um, so I'm just going to go through the questions and see what kind of questions we have. Uh, Jeff, right there, um, you were the first person. Hey, Neil. Hey, Chris. Good to see you. Uh, Jeff was the first comment with Whip It. Good job. Uh, let's see. Uh, I'm just going to go through. Um, I don't have root. Okay, so here's a question. Let's see. Uh, this is by Max. Hey, Max. All right. So I don't have the roots down to muscle memory yet. So even if I want to play A roots in the G major, I'd still have to try. Basically, what I'm asking is how do you practice getting roots down to muscle memory? And when playing G major, should we use the G root as home? Well, that's a, a, that's a lesson and a half. So, um, Max, the way you get root notes down, uh, um, there's many ways to get root notes down. But when we're talking scale wise, and this is, is going to be the stupidest answer, is... You know, you uh, whether you're playing a nevertheless pentatonic or the boxes of the pentatonic or a scale, you just want to stop. You want to stop and just say to yourself, well, there's my root position. Because the thing is, is in scales, like a minor pentatonic, the root is always in the same place, right? So, okay, this is an A. That's an A. And that's an A. You, it's more about knowing the locations of the root in the scale shape that you were doing, all right? And so... Um, in a form one, you have the root notes there and you want to sit, you just want to sit with it and just say, okay, well, there's my root. Now, if you move into position two, another way to do it, by the way, is just to start. And, and that's what that nevertheless pentatonic is about is it, it helps you start on the roots uh, of the uh, pentatonics instead of starting like, you know, here's your form one. Whoa, 
Robert, thank you. That's very, very, very kind and unnecessary, but thank you. Um, he doesn't need to touch it. <laughs> so, uh, oh, um, sorry, I missed a the comment there. But so honestly, practicing your scales and knowing the root positions. So when you move that to a D, you know it's a root of here, here, and here. And you want to pause on them. And when you get into a next form, don't ever, rule number one, if you're practicing forms, don't ever come in on the lowest note of the scale because your brain is going to associate that. Um, uh, your, your brain is going to associate that low note with being a root physically. And it's not, you always want to come in on like form two and come back up to the root note and know where it is. And same thing with the form three, instead of playing like, you know, start on the root note. And know where your root notes are. Okay. Uh, hey, Scott, good to see you. And so for that question, um, you know where the root notes are. Now, for the other part of the question, which is, you know, should you practice G major? Well, I know it sounds weird. The reason I did that in the video is if you practice the G major scale, the brain is going to see those root notes, you know, and it's going to focus more on those as home. Uh, which is the effect you want, and it's going to help you stay away from it. So I hope that made sense. But you want to practice your boxes or your scales, and you want to pause on a root note and realize that it's not – Don't you don't even need to say the letter name. You just really want to know, like, what spot that root note position is in. All right, so now, uh, will you do in the memory of Elizabeth Reed in conjunction because it's so similar? Maybe, okay. Um, uh, let's see, I'm just going through all the lessons. Uh, yes, I did. Okay, awesome, Max. Thank you. Um, I, okay, nope, good stuff. Whoa. Uh, I've always heard the main riff between two parts being ABC bent up. Um, okay, that's more of a statement. I apologize. Uh, Imad write, writes, what's the jam? I don't understand. That's something actually I did not um, for uh, Imad. Um, well, okay, um, is I never really um, went over the jam. Okay, so the jam, does anyone here know what the time signature of the jam is? I'm sure there's a lot of Allen Brothers fans who, um, uh, nice, nice to have you here, Guitar Hack. Um, Anybody know what time signature this thing is in? Okay, and that's that, that's important. No, uh, nope. Uh, uh, Asaph, there's one part in 11, but it's not 11. And Tom, it's not really three, four. Just keep on, uh, hey, Jason, just do some more multiplication here. Um, it's actually in 12, 8. All right. Um, there is a part that's in 11. There we go. Scott, 12, 11. Yeah. Okay. Slime bread, six. Hey, slimy. Uh, six, eight. I, I'm going to lean more towards 12, eight, even though you can say, well, isn't 12, eight divided by two, six. Yeah. It's just, it's, it's how long for the riff to come to completion is how I, uh, count it. And so, um, the riff, you know, again, in that video, you can play an A minor seven, simply like this, a B minor seven, simply like this. And then you can come back to a C like this. So you get one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Actually, let me make a loop of it while I'm at it, right? Let's see if we can do that. There we go. I'll save that for later. And by the way, bye bye. Um, my favorite new pick. All right, so now, so it's a 12 8 jam. And so that's the jam. And somebody asked on the, on the, uh, on the comments, like, what is the jam? That is the whole jam section. Okay. Um, nice. You didn't get fired. I don't know what that's in. Uh, hey stitch first time here. Great stuff. And don't worry about the name. Uh, should you attempt it? Ooh, John. Scuse, Dick. That's my best attempt. All right. So <laughs> why does the first chord work so well? With the seventh chord, if the seventh uh, is major and not diminished, why does the one chord work so well? Uh, I don't understand. Put that in better context. Think about like I just don't understand that question. Um, so now I'm going to keep on going though. All right, Sudlik, Sudlik, exactly. Replay. That's what I said. Definitely twelve eight. Okay. So now here we go. I'm going to keep on going through the comments. Um, let's see. Okay. Could there be any, okay. This is a great question. This is a great, great, great question right here. This is by shadow Scott. I don't know if shadow Scott is on this feed, but we'll find out. Could there be any benefit to think B Phrygian in terms of the key of G a minor seven B minor seven? Cause the C is a minor except the base yanked it and noodling between D and D sharp for the major third rubs against the B. If you're thinking B is a good landing zones. Well, you know, it's a great question. Um, and the way I, the way I personally think about modes, um, is I always divert um, the mode back to its major key. And then I compare it to the progression. The reason I do that is because if you know the major scale all over the entire guitar neck, then you know every single mode. 
if you want to think about it and be Phrygian, then you got to kind of regroup your whole entire head into thinking, well, how do I, you know, structure my be Phrygian scales, which you can do. But the thing is, is what I do is I compare it to the progression starting on the A minor. And so the, in, the special intervals, um, the reason I think that the B, and I was just talking to uh, this about someone, the reason I think the B is very prevalent is because if you look at that riff, right, if you look at the actual jam, it's A minor seven for four beats, B minor seven for four beats, C and back to B minor seven. The B minor seven is actually half of that progression. And that's why that works. So I necessarily wouldn't think of it in terms of B Phrygian. I would just think of it as it's G major and A Dorian jam. And because that B takes up half the time, that B is sounding good. And that's just my logic behind things. So I hope that makes sense. All right. Uh, how do I hold your Les Paul in this weird position? Uh, <laughs> what was it? Uh, Kaylin, what? Um, oh my God. What, what was your name for the dinosaur thigh? <laughs> Somebody asked how I hold my guitar in this position. It's because I have giant thighs, right? And I'm propped up on the chair that's really high and I have a short torso. Anybody? Uh, do you ever think of the modes as progressions, as progression of flats? Um, <laughs> hey, William. Um, EJ, what do you mean by that? Do you, like, as in like, um, as in a progression of flats, like adding flats, like if I have like an A and then if I want Dorian, uh, well, actually that's going to sharpen something. Like A, if I fridge, I'm going to flatten the two. I'll be a little bit more specific because I'm sure that if we were talking in person, we can hash it out. But at, through text, it's, it's hard for me to understand that stuff. So I'll, I'll wait for that um, question. So, um, okay, so where's Kaylin? I know she's here, but um, yeah, that uh, she she named it something like a dinosaur leg. Um, and, and I'm just resting this on my thigh. That's my thigh. I'm bouncing it. See, blah, blah, blah. It's like a little puppet show. Um, present. Yeah. Kaylin, what was the name of, of, of the, um, the dinosaur thigh thing that you, uh, you, you quoted? It was really funny. Um, while you, while you do that, let's see. Well, good stuff. Thanks. Cool lesson. Awesome, man. Nice to see Les Paul's. Hey, that's from Colin who's watching. Uh, and, uh, we'll talk about that. Great class. Great lesson. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Stitch. Um, uh, is Tom here? Tom Spallone, you're here, right? I, I'm glad he just wrote a comment that he said that it really was bringing in. Um, <laughs> yes, he, he just wrote a comment that this exercise on whipping post was really starting to bring in modes for him because, you know, mode is a major scale and we have this progression. So if you can see the major scale on top of that progression and play modally, uh, you're on the right track and I'm happy for you. Um, let's see. Awesome lesson. Great lessons. Exactly what I teach. Thank you. Okay. The E flat really has an A1 steak sauce sound. It's recognizable straight away. Yes, it does. Um, my Les Paul is repaired. We'll get to the Les Paul repair in a second. Um, it'd be super helpful if you could see the right hand too. Yeah, you know, somebody said, hey, can we see your right hand? Uh, in my a part two video where we get more into the pentatonics and building something, uh, I'll definitely show my right hand uh, for you. Um, actually, I also have a question. Now that I think about it, why does the E flat work on the G major scale? Is there something about the progression? Okay, so this comes from John Farah. I don't know if John is here, but he was asking, why does that E flat work if we're thinking about the G major scale. Now, for all of you stitch meth heads that are out there, right? Um, music works in a very, very particular way, which is you have your chord progression and you have your scale. And it's the chord progression in which you are looking and analyzing from, from a 3D perspective, okay? And so what's happening here is it's not necessarily the E flat of, of the G major scale. It, that, that, that's an illusion. Uh, what it is is the G major scale is the thread of the notes that we're putting on top of the chord progression, but the E flat is in direct comparison to the chord progression. Um, I'm going to see that in a second. So we have this A minor, that is our home. And you know, the one, four, five, A, D, and E, the flat five against it is always going to have that sound. Um, I don't know if the audio is doubled for everyone. If it is, please let me know. Yes, Quadrosaurus Rex. Thank you, Kalen. Stitch method, sure, it's Quadrosaurus Rex. That's primo. Um, like, oh, hey, everyone, right now, everyone just say thank you, Tom. Uh, thank you, Tom. There's Tom right there. He is the man that I say, Tom, this one's for you. That's him. He's the one that um, that I met twice, and within one minute of, uh, of me meeting him, I said, hey, is there anything that you want to learn on Stitch method? And he said, it, just with a joyous, uh, just a, a joyous smile, he was like, whip, whip and post. And I was like, all right, coming at you. So that was for him. Uh, and so, so the, the the flat five, right? The flat five for uh, this is more about off of the home chord, which is um, an A. So that's why it works. And um, and he writes that in a G and C progression, sometimes the E flat works. So if I had G and C, well, let's see. All right, let's let's try this out. Let's try this out. He says that sometimes in a G to C progression. 
the solo is used as an E flat. So let's sing one. Let's analyze this. Well, if you want to make a rock sounding, right? Let's see. You can get the minor pentatonic, and then if you throw the Aeolian. Yeah, okay, so the reason it works, I mean, it's, it's just, it's the sound of rock, uh, which is if you throw the, the G minor, it's really a G minor um, that I'm looking at. It has the E flat in it. And so if you put the G minor scale on top of a G C, you get the rock sound, and that E minor is going to work just fine. It has a really saucy uh, sound to it. Probably going to steal that idea. All right, here we go. Uh, let's just keep on looking. Uh, then, okay, so those are all the questions. So now I'll answer the question. Uh, yes, the E flat works against the A minor chord, not the G major. Exactly. Timo, that's what I was just saying. Exactly, it's against the A. All right, so I'll open this up to a, a oh, oh, actually, hold on. Uh, working against the A minor chord, she, you avoid the E flat when, um, no, no, um, okay, Colin, Colin just asked, uh, with the E flat working against the A minor chord, uh, should you avoid the E flat when it comes to the B minor seven? Uh, no, uh, because the, the whole thing moves so fast and it's grounded on the A and it's kind of like um, a radar blip, you know, like in a radar blip where it's like, bloop, and, and, and it kind of traces off, that A is still like, everyone knows they're coming home to the A. So that, that flat seven is going to be compared to that A, no matter where you are in the progression. And um, and uh, so that, that makes, I hope that makes sense. So there you go. Um, so my first live video, hey, Matthew, cool. Sounds like it was heading towards surf lip. Yeah, it, it kind of it sounded surfy, right? Which is, uh, surf music is kind of like born in the rock uh, era. So uh, every note works in context. Hey, David, long time no see, David. I was just teaching David about, I don't know, 20 minutes ago. <laughs> so, um, all right. So there's that. Now, there's one thing I totally forgot to mention. Totally forgot to mention. And I have to put this in part two because I'm not sure all, everyone is going to be um, um, watching this review. But let's see. I say this all the time. What is my most underrated video and stitch method for the win? What's my most underrated? Uh, and I say this pretty much in every other live feed. Do, 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 do. I'm just gonna wait here patiently. Yes, James, the power of the five. Look at you guys. You guys are best. All right. Uh, the power of the five. So if we have a uh, hey, 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 Jeff, you're Ian. <laughs> that, uh, that is Jeff. That that is, he, uh, Jeff. If you click on his channel right there, I don't know where. Um, he's he's got some really good covers. I mean, you're technically fantastic, Jeff. I really enjoy listening to them. Um, so uh, not know the video. I uh, let. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about, <laughs> but I'll figure it out. Um, the power of the five. Okay, so if we're in the key of A, what's the five? E. Man, Ace, if you're just pff, Shadow Scott. Oh, wait, Shadow Scott. You know, I just answered one of your questions, right, buddy? Uh, I don't know if you saw it. If you missed it, just go to the replay, okay? Uh, Matthew Nunes. Yes, Z. Okay. Uh, so <laughs> Uh, so, so, oh, nice. The introduction video. Yes. Very funny. Okay. I get it. All right. Good. All right. So five, the one thing I forgot to mention is I always talk about the B. I always talk about the B being part of that, um, that, uh, where you can stall out. Let me just get this here. Uh, so like staying on the five, right? A five. You can hear it really has a good kick, right? Okay. So always, you can always uh, get in on that five two as well. So if you happen to buy the chart, I can I, on the chart it shows you where the E flat is. Just take the E flat, move it up one fret, and you have a five. So the B's and the E's are stable. Okay, totally stable, totally worth like stable as in it's like oh this is so good, but like woo okay. Um, G major using A Doran. Brad nailed it on the nosy. All right, so um, any any question? Any other questions? And um um. EJ, like I, I wanted, to, I wanted to see what you mean by that. If you want to email me, because it, it, it sounds like a good question, and I think it's a matter of perspective. Um, and that's the whole thing, you know. Everybody can think all different things, and all is good. It's just you got to make sure that whatever foundation you have for perspective, you can see all of it, right? And so, um, 
I want to see if I missed any questions. How do you decide to use parallel or derivative mindset with modes? Okay, um, hold on. Half your progression is on the BMR7, E flat, major third, B scale doesn't give you minor third, major third mix when you hit it, E flat while playing with the BMR. Yes, we talked about that, Kevin, uh, in a question, and James, I will get to you. Uh, but Kevin, yes, it is the major third and minor third of the B. It totally is. Um, but at the same time, I think of it as a flat five with the progression. It's just potato, potato. Dorian, oh, Dorian has one flat, Aeolian two. Is that what you're talking about? Dorian. One, two, flat, three, four, five, six, flat. Well, email me because I might think like, but I don't, I still don't get it. Not that it, it's interesting. Anyway. Okay. So, um, how do you decide to use parallel or, de or derivative mindsets with modes? Well, James, I want you to watch, geez, I want you to watch my Santana video. I want you to watch my never lost modes video. And the thing is, um, hmm. Hmm. I'm still trying to figure that out, EJ. <laughs> I really am. Um, and uh, so the whole the whole entire idea is if you have a minor mode, um, whether it's, let's say it's a Dorian jam, you can taste test your uh, parallel modes, right? You can taste test them, no problem. Like, let me just see what this sounds like. If it works, it works. Um, and the only time you can do that is when you, Jeff, uh, hold on to that thought for two weeks, by the way. Uh, if you have a chord progression that has, now now this is more of a groove, just to let you know, this is a groove. I call it jam, but this is a groove. But if you have something that's more specific and has chords for a much more extended amount of time and it's the fine song you're jamming over, it's harder to shift around your modes. But if you have a groove that's very, very like repetitive and stable, you can explore more. And that's my best answer. And I hope that made sense. Um, okay. Sorry, I just got an email. All right, so I hope that made sense. It's more about... If you have a groove, okay. Uh, if you're still okay, awesome, David. Have a, tell tell the kids to have a good night. Um, over on G major, yes, D major, leading, yes. And um, it's funny that Jeff mentioned A Dorian is G major, which is D mix D mix Lydian. Um, and uh, when I do part two of Whipping Post, that's gonna come into play. Do I ever do both in one jam? Yeah, like you know Santana uh, and um, and anything where you want to have the taste of that jam. Yes, you can. And it's up to you. If you watch, I have a video, right. I have a video I do with Sean Daniel called super modes. And we talk about that exact thing. All right. So watch the super modes video and that becomes, that's user-friendly stuff. Okay. Um, and so it, it, it's totally user-friendly. Okay. So show that. Okay. Uh, okay. let's see. Um, ever tried dumb up big stubby pick. I just started using that about two months ago. Less string pluck noise, not forgiving a bad execution. Um, well, parallel and derivative, by the way, big fan. Um, Hmm. James, I, I'm, I'm now I'm like, hmm. We'll talk about that. You can email me the question wholeheartedly. That's the thing. What is a derivative mode? Are you talking about uh, uh, derivative modes? Um, there's parallel modes and there's relative modes. Um, and the thing is a parallel mode, I would say, I, I mean, I, I'm, I'm just talking. See, that's the problem with music is like all these terms. So a derivative mode is really, I mean, I, I, I can't, you can either say it's a parallel mode or a relative mode, you know, like a mixolydian is, um, a mixolydian is D major, D Ionian. So there's so many terms. I know, <laughs> David, I know. And so even if you decide to use something like that, it's going to still be the same mode. Your mode for your song is absolutely formed by your chord progression. And so you don't have a ton of options. Um, you can get into exotic scale work if you want to, but I, I, to make a long story short, when you're playing in a certain mode, if it's minor or major, um, you're kind of locked into a minor mode or a major mode. The super mode video, I'm sure it'll help, I hope, okay? Speaking of terms, got any advice for studying algebra? <sighs> no, but I will tell you that I took philosophy, no, yeah, philosophy, like the philosophy of logic in college, and I didn't get it. Like, I just didn't get it. And we had a test. And, I, and the day of the test, I went to my professor. And I just said, hey, listen, I've been studying, like, nonstop. And I just need a couple more days before it clicks. Can I get an extension on the test? He said, sure. And so I went I went back to my uh, my dorm. And I studied, studied, studied. And thank you. you know, thank you, Jeebus. Um, it uh, it clicked. And I went back and said, I'm totally ready. And it clicked. So just study hard, man. And just say to yourself, if it makes sense to someone, it should make sense to me. Um, whoa. James Hewell, like, have you ever listened to Munyon? David Solomon, right underneath you. I <laughs> just uh, talked about that band last week. Uh, 
terms, maybe an eventual. Yeah, the, the live no quarter. I think it's just. I think it's just Edorn. I can't remember. Um, read a lot. Well, well, no. Okay. Um, okay. If you're stuck in minor or major, how does Trey use Dorian over Mixolydian progression so much? Um, well, because we talked about that, Jason. How does Trey use? Because a, a Dorian is just a Mixolydian scale with a minor third. And we all know when you put a minor third on top of a major third of a chord, you get that rock sound. So instead of sounding like Jerry Garcia, he chooses just to sound more rocky with the minor third in it. And, that, and that's it. So like that's that's what he does. I mean, anytime you have a seventh chord or mixolydian progression, Dorian it up. Go do it. I have tons of videos on that Dorian stuff. All right. So now um, my Les Paul, just to let you know, it is all repaired. It, um, Rick Esmega, A-S-M-E-G-A in Northport, Florida. Now, when you see this repair, you're going to see a little tiny divot right there. Tiny, 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 kind of like, like a, a plane's worth of wood. It's because I lost that piece of wood. So I must've fallen off, but he did this repair and it's perfect. And all these little nooks and crannies are from when I was 13 years old and resting it on the amp. So I was gigging and everything, but the neck is absolutely perfect. And this thing plays like a doll. And so I love it. I absolutely love it. Um, okay, uh, more questions. Any more questions? That's the one that just got broke. Yes, this is the one that just got broke. This is a Les Paul that my dad bought me when I was 13 years old. And <laughs> and so, yeah, it, it, uh, it's it's perfect. I mean, it's cleaned up. It's awesome. Con a buddy guy is in town for a concert in two weeks. Should you go? Yes, buddy guy is is awesome. I mean, that guy just does. Uh, I don't think so, Kaylin. I don't know. It's what's in your heart, right? Um, so, uh, <laughs> how, uh, beat buddy order coming. Oh, I have the beat buddy. It's right here. I'm still getting used to it, <laughs> but yeah, it's awesome. Uh, it's right there. Uh, twiddle is good too. Also grateful shred. Yeah, you show me grateful shred buddy guys and fun. Let's see. Have you ever thought of analyzing a fish trays, older crazy composition for a vid? Yeah, you know, I have. Um, but here's the real deal. You know, David Solomon, who's here somewhere. Um, when you analyze a composition, the only thing that you're going to get from it is, okay, well, here's a chord progression. Um, here's the idea uh, behind the chords. And let's see, will we understand ever why he went from E minor seven to an F11, you know, and, and we say no, but we study it. And, and, and the whole idea is like, are we going to, are we going to copy that? No. Um, the whole, he, his compositions are purely organic. We were just having this conversation. They're really, really organic. That guy is used to writing music since he's six years old. He can hum and he can sing and, and, I think that his humming voice and his natural musicianship in him help him write these things. You know, one thing, uh, you know, I, I, <laughs> I was just talking to Dave. I really want to sit down with Trey. I really want to sit down with him and, and just talk to him. Not, not fanboy on him, but just sit and, and really just talk about the musical mind. Uh, let's see, what musical knowledge must one possess to write like that? Yeah. Jazz and classical? Um, so, yeah, you know, the thing is, is he does, it's obvious that Trey knows his jazz stuff, but it's, it, it's, it's pulled back. You know, he hit the upper echelon of jazz stuff, but he pulled it back down to like where the jazz meets blues and rock. So, um, yes. Um, Yem is amazing. So you want to know your jazz stuff, but you can't learn your jazz stuff until you learn your blues and your rock and your, and your bluesy jazz. Uh, I think some finger pick mixed in. I don't know. I'll have to check it out. Yeah. Yem is pretty awesome. You, know, you and drum yourself. is just a bunch of arpeggios and I haven't played in a while, but you know, it's G minor. <laughs> To the B flat, right? Oh no, to the C. To the F. Back to the C. Oh. Oh shit. There it is. Yeah, I haven't played in a while, but yeah, it, that's all arpeggio. I mean, the whole entire intro is arpeggios. Hey man, I was researching a whole research whole the other day and I found out this thing called voice leading, essentially a way of picking chord inversions, or that's how it seems to be. Oh yeah, absolutely. Voice leading, it's it's so voice leading is actually rather simple, and I think I know the video that you saw. Um, voice leading is is simple stuff. Let's just say you have like um a basic one, four, and five, A, D, and E. You know, when you play an A chord here and you want to take it to D, this voicing puts the note in the root. And then if you take it to this voicing, you've led this chord by by lowering this note into the chord. So the term voice leading is about using your chord voicings in, with roots in different positions that get into another chord with different notes in their different positions. It's not the hardest thing in the world. Maybe I'll make a video about it because it's, it's an interesting topic that I think a lot of people get like stressed out about. But it's just about how you can take um, 
sounds so good. Any of their favorite? Oh, uh, yes, Albert, give me one second. I'll, I'll tell you in a second. Um, you know, um, crap, I forgot what I was going to say. There it is again. Um, oh, yeah. Well, voice leading can take an, like a, a cool progression. Um, let's, you know, and turn to the, let's see. Uh, And so the notes that are, the, the notes the notes that are half step back from each other are um, are um, playing with each other in different ways than you would if you played open chords. It's the notes that in the chords that like are half step away from each other as you move. Very easy stuff. Um, Albert, why does a one six four five chord progression sound so good? Any other favorite combinations you can recommend? Oh yes. Um, and, okay, so first the reason the one six four five sounds good is because the one four and five are the major chords of the key, and the six is the relative minor. So Take care, Slimy. So, you know, basic one, six, four, five. Like, well, let's talk about that. Yeah, the one falls into its relative minor, gets a little sad, gets happier with the four, builds the cadence to the five, mech home. Another very famous progression is a one, two, four, five. And one, two, four, fives, you're also going to find in, in, in do up. So I like one, six, four, fives and one, two, four, fives. Um, but that's why they work is because it's, it's a root note and it's a, it's the relative minor, then up to the happiness and up to the cadence or the five and back home to the one. How are you, playing? Uh, are you going to any of the Alpharetta shows? Uh, the fish shows? Um, no, unfortunately, but I will be in Alpharetta. Well, I'll be in Atlanta tomorrow. I'm going to the Atlanta dead show. So if you know anyone, you know, I'd love to say hi. Thanks for answering. I love if you did a video on it. Sure, sure, I could. Um, <laughs> and so, uh, uh, does Farmhouse have the same progression as Let It Be? Ooh, uh, what's, what, what's the what's the progression to? Um... Welcome, this is Farmhouse. We got plus the fun. Yeah. Da, 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 da. Yes. Out of trouble, Mother Mary comes to me. Uh, yeah, actually, that's that's the one five six four progression. Which is the biggest of them all? Like the one six four five is is the biggest uh, chord progression there is. One six four five. So yeah, there's fishes. Uh, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. All right. Um, and then that's every other song. I'm sure if you guys watch um, Axis of Awesome, just Google or go on YouTube. Axis of Awesome. They play about ten minutes of this chord progression. They show you every song that's been written with that. Uh, what do you need from a would-be student for a video lesson? Um, wait, Rick. Rick, did you did you email me already with a video request, Rick? Or is that a different Rick? I have a Rick, Ricky. No. Um, you just got to go to my website, fill out the form, and and uh, send a video over of you playing. Um, isn't your thing, but got any thoughts on Jimmy Her Herring? Jimmy Herring's really good. It's just... Um, yeah, listen, man, like I know Kevin's here <laughs> and Kevin, Kevin, <laughs> Kevin left a comment saying like, oh, uh, not in a bad way. It's just I'm, I'm opinionated and it's OK to be opinionated. It really is OK to be opinionated. Uh, it's just like to me, Jimmy Herring's good and great, but he doesn't grab me by the by, you know, the hoots by like Trey or or Jerry or or Dickie or Dwayne or Warren. Um, and I i am never, ever, 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 ever. <laughs> going to be and i have nothing against ace of i don't think ace of nothing against jimmy i'm not like oh jimmy's bad jimmy's terrible. no he's great it's just like you know everybody resonates with something different but i'm i'm never ever and i'm not saying this about jimmy but like i'm never ever ever gonna you know worship anyone for playing fast you know and so uh and, and that's that's the truth i just I, I mean like oh you can play fast fantastic but it's like i rather say something i'd rather like Keep it slow and steady. Like I'm, I'm a groove boy, you know. So hope that made sense. Let it be with C. Yes. Um. One. One. Yeah. Is that the same progression? Like. Uh, Welcome. This is a farmhouse. Yeah. Same chord progression. Uh. It's not, okay, so uh, Tampa has an awesome metal scene. Have you ever checked it out? Well, you know, um, EJ, one, when I worked at Starbucks, there was this guy I worked with, Dolan, who um, 
who was a heavy metal drummer and he was just such a good drummer and he would talk about the scene and stuff. And I, you know, to be honest, um, you know, with, with a family and everything, like I'm in bed by like 10 30 and you know, I got to go up the next day. So I haven't really checked out the metal scene, but I do like, okay. So you know what time out, you know, EJ, you bring up a really good, important part here. Uh, a, a, a important question. Take it easy, Rick. Um, metal. I like metal and I like metal with fast guitar. I do, because I think that fits the genre. Uh, uh, heavy Metal Drummer is a great Wilco song, Wilco being one of my favorite bands. And I think that in the genre of heavy metal, it's it, it, I, I want to hear fast guitar. But when it comes to like a band that's not um, uh, <laughs> not heavy metal, um, I think like, you know, if you're just showing off, and not this isn't this isn't about Jimmy Herring, this just spawned the conversation. If you're just showing off to be fast, it's like, eh. But I think that in in heavy metal, like the genre, I, I really do actually do like fast guitar playing. I, I really listen to that uh, and and say, yeah, okay, this is cool. So that made sense. Uh, love to hear any thoughts about Jackaro. Dead and uh, Dead and Come just broke it out, and it was awesome. I heard, I heard. Uh, no, I, I haven't heard it. Um, I heard that they just busted it out. Take care, Joe. I'll see you Monday. Uh, Stitch train Central Park two weeks before the Robinson show. You're gonna now listen to me, David. You're not messing with me, right? Stitch, Trey in Central Park, two weeks before the Robinson show, you're going to go, oh, maybe. Oh, maybe. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I'm maybe. I, I didn't realize that. So, yes, because I'm, I'll be at the Chris Robinson show on July 27th in uh, Patchogue. I'm very excited about that. Uh, Chris Robinson. Hard to handle from Bear's Choice. Ellen, please, please, please. Maybe. Okay. Uh, nice. Uh, yeah, Chris Robinson band. Uh, Robert uh, has my favorite guitar player, or one of my favorite guitar players, Neil Casal in it um so anyway, all right so i'm gonna wrap things up uh do you like your prs semi hollow looking into one i love my prs semi hollow i loved loved my fred uh semi hollow until ups smashed into little bitch uh, little bits and they're being little bitches about it but we'll take care of that okay we'll take care of that anyway so <laughs> do you want to hear again like i'm not gonna let myself get up upset about it but you want to hear some some bs so there's a helicopter over my house right now um the uh so my UPS package. And if any of you guys like know, like the head of UPS, uh, just email them this video at the timestamp. Um, Joe, hold on for one second, get there. Uh, it was crushed by two tire marks, huge tire marks. They sent it to their damage department, said, Oh, well, you didn't pack it right. And then they sent the box back and they rubbed all the tire marks off of it. But we took pictures of it. So, like, they're like, No, nothing ever happened. It wasn't crushed by a tire. What are you talking about? So, anyway. Um, Joe, before you go, I love advice on the Eyes of the World jam with the E minor, B minor, and E, B minor, A. Joe, you know, I do have a whole live video, a whole live video about that, the um, the Eyes of the World jam. Did you see that? Because I think all, if I, I don't mean to sound like, oh, all the answers in there, but I believe all the answers are in there. Um, I'm, uh, and, yeah, um, Shadowcast, when it comes, oh, yeah, Joe, go look at that. Stitch Method eyes of the world and and there's a chart and everything and the whole jam is on there so i did the eyes of the world um yes and i'll talk to you shadow cat a uh, shadow scott i call you shadow cast um um is uh if you type in whipping post right and you and you see um you see his performance on uh, uh on whipping post um they do something really cool in the jam they turn it into a d mixolydian jam for a couple minutes and they let him kind of like play the mixolydian <laughs> And then they get back into that A uh, Dorian thing. It's pretty cool. So I'll be getting into some more and stuff. Uh, do you know the picks? Uh, Martin, um, no, but I'm sure. I, I think you asked that question on my pick video. I don't know the picks that, that Jerry played with. I I, I, I can't, not that I don't know. I just can't recall the name, but I'm sure somebody um, in the comment section of where you left it um, uh, will, uh, are they Adam's picks? Yeah, Jared knows everything. Jared Bilton is like, I don't know, like a, um, a Jerry Garcia, like trivial pursuit player. Um, I drove my car delivery into my neighbor Applebee's because they cut me off from PM. Wow. Okay. Danny, uh, government mule is great. Government mule. I love, I, I don't know the drummer's name for government mule, but I love the drummer of government mule. My God, he looks like Ac Axel Rose when distance. So it's always fun to watch Axel Rose play drums. All right, guys, I'm going to be get going soon. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for being here. Um, and, uh, and we'll get more and more stuff. Um, I do have uh, Jeff Good, who's watching, knows that I do have a um, special Hendrix video coming up about reading Hendrix's mind from the past, and it's going to be kind of cool. Um, and so, Colin, again, I'm going to watch when I see you, and I'm going to get the FaceTime with you. Um, thanks, everything, for uh, 
uh, everyone for being here. I got to get so much stuff done. Uh, again, I'll be in uh, Atlanta tomorrow for the Dead and Company show. I'm going to just uh, – wh which video? Which video? The, Hendri the Hendrix video? Probably be next week. Um, bye, everyone. Yes, thank you, Robert. Everyone, hope I answered all your questions. Thank you so much for being here. Tom, look at you. It's just sitting there. You're right. You just watched the whole chat. That's great. Um, Tom, honestly, like, it, you, you know, it's so nice to have a subscriber um, contribute – uh, to Stitch Method, and uh, you know, hopefully, I run into you another dead show at Wani next year. Um, all right, guys, have a great, great um, week, and I'll see you back with Tuesday with a new video. And um, just know tomorrow, I'll probably shoot like a live feed or a little thanks or a little like a post. And oh, doggy, come on, dog, you don't have to do that. Uh, thank you so much, doggy. Honestly, thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, that's that I much appreciate it. Good night, everyone, and uh, go practice your whipping post stuff because we got things to do, right? We got things to do. All right, take care, guys. Bye bye.